Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me on this video today where we're talking about parallel and perpendicular lines. We're going to discuss how to graph both lines, what parallel and perpendicular lines look like on a coordinate plane, and what it actually means to see them, and what the differences are, are between parallel lines and perpendicular lines and the equations of those lines. So first it says here parallel lines, and we already know the definition of parallel lines. They're lines that never intersect each other, that, that you've known since second or third grade for sure. But what we do need to know now for equations is that parallel lines have the same slope. When I talk about this with my students, I constantly ask them, parallel lines have the what? And they say, same slope. And if you just keep saying that in your head, it's going to get burned in there with no problem. But those two equations do have different y-intercepts. So they have different y-intercepts. So imagine a y-intercept here and a y-intercept here. But then the lines that are created through them, they have the exact same slope. So different y-intercepts, same slope, they're never going to intersect each other. So for example, these two equations here, this system rather, would be a system of equations that is definitely parallel because we can definitely see that they have the exact same slope. Slope here would be two, and it's very easy to see the slope because they're both in slope intercept form. The next system of equations would be this, 4x plus y equals two and 4x plus y equals four. Now these two equations are in standard form. Hopefully we know how to really quickly see the slope. Whenever you see the slope, to see the slope, rather, in standard form would be to do negative a over b. So my a value is 4, my b value is 1. If I just do negative 4 over 1, that's my slope. So negative 4 over 1 is my slope. Negative 4 over 1 is also my slope. Those would definitely be parallel to each other. They have the exact same slope. The last system would be this form. Again, if I did that trick of just doing negative a over b to see my slope in standard form, it would be negative 2 over negative 3. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So both of these have a slope of 2 thirds. I could rearrange those equations, guys, put them into slope intercept form to see the slope, but I feel like that little pattern rule is very, very easy to use. And we know this, parallel lines do not intersect and they are equidistant from each other. And by equidistant, I mean that if these two lines are parallel to each other, the distance from my fingertips to each other, so this distance here, is equal to the distance between my elbows. So it's not like they get closer at some point and then wider. They're always equidistant to each other. So here it says write the equation of a line parallel to y equals 2x minus 3 through the point of negative 1, 2. I'm going to just zoom out for a moment so we can see this, the full screen a little bit better. Okay, so parallel means same slope. So I would look at this equation and I would say, okay, well, I see the slope in this equation is two. So the slope of my equation that should be parallel to this line should also be two. And now to write my equation, what I need is my y-intercept. So if I give you the slope in an ordered pair, and we did this in a previous lesson, you take the slope and the ordered pair pair to solve for b to write your equation. You take the slope and the ordered pair to solve for b to write your equation. Ready? So this is my slope. This 2 is going to go here for m. This x value of negative 1 will go here. This 2 value of my y will go here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug those three numbers in. So it's going to be 2 equals 2 times negative 1 plus b. So we take the slope and the ordered pair to solve for b. There's regular solving equations, and now we can write our equation. So our equation is y equals 2x, so we're using that slope, same slope. We just solve for b to find our y-intercept, and that's it. We're now going to take those two equations, and we are going to graph them. So my first one, I'm going to color code and just put a red dot there. It would be a y-intercept at negative 3, a slope of 2, Okay, and so that's what this first graph would look like. I'm then going to color code and do the second one in blue, let's say. So a y-intercept at 4, a slope of 2. So notice we said parallel lines have the same slope but a different y-intercept. And I think you can see pretty clearly that these lines are definitely parallel to each other. 
Okay, definitely parallel to each other. They just go through different y-intercepts. Okay, let's take a look at a couple other problems of this same skill. It says write the equation of a line parallel to y equals 3x minus 2 through the point negative 1, negative 2. Parallel means same slope. So I'm going to take the slope of this equation, 3. I'm going to take this ordered pair, x and y, and I'm going to go ahead and plug to you take the slope. And the ordered pair, so these points are going to get plugged in into this equation to solve for b. So my y is negative 2, my m is 3, my x value is negative 1. I'm going to go ahead, do my work to solve for b, and I end up getting my b value is 1. So my new equation is y equals 3x plus 1. Pretty good. I'm now going to take the first equation that I was given, the original equation, and the brand new equation that we created. I'm going to go ahead and graph these. So y-intercept at negative 2, a slope of 3. All right, so that is my first graph. And then I'm going to go ahead and graph my second equation. So y-intercept at 1, slope of 3. Graph that line. I don't like I did, that I didn't have arrows before, so I'm going to fix that up. And there we go. We have our parallel lines. They're parallel because they have the same slope, but they have different y-intercepts. We're good to go. Last one here. Write the equation of the line parallel to 2x minus 3y equals 6 through the point 0, 3. So remember that little trick I showed you before about finding the slope? All I care about of this equation right now is just calculating my slope. And my slope is negative a over b. So negative 2 over negative 3, which is just 2 thirds. So that means I need a slope of 2 thirds in my new equation. So I take the slope and the ordered pair to solve for b to write my equation. My y value is 3. My slope is 2 thirds. My x is 0. 2 thirds times 0 is just 0. This actually gives us a really easy equation because my y value is b, which by the way, this ordered pair is the y-intercept. Anytime you see x is 0, the y value is the y-intercept. Always works that way. I'm going to go ahead and graph these two new equations now. Now something I also don't want you to forget is how easy it is when you have an equation in standard form to calculate the intercepts, to graph it. So, for example, if I plug in a 0 for x, right, 2 times 0 is 0. So I'm really just left with negative 3y equals 6. If I've got negative 3y equals 6, then my y value is negative 2 if I solve for y. If I go ahead and I plug in a 0 for y, negative 3 times 0 is just 0. I'm left with 2x equals 6, which means my x value is 3. I have a whole extra video on how to find intercepts, so if that was confusing for you and you're not sure how to do that, definitely take a look at that video. And then if I go ahead and I graph this equation, y-intercept at 3, slope of 2 thirds. Notice the slope between these two points when we did intercepts was 2 thirds. Everything is connected, guys, and I have my parallel lines. Pretty good. All right, parallel, uh, perpendicular now rather. Perpendicular lines look like a perfect T, like a perfect cross, okay? And this upside down letter T is the symbol for perpendicular. Perpendicular lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals. And what that means is we change the sign. So if it's positive, it becomes negative. If it's negative, a negative negative is a positive. You change the sign and you flip the fraction. That's what a reciprocal would be. So if I gave you an original slope of 2 thirds, the perpendicular slope, if I change the sign and flip my fraction, would be negative 2 thirds. So if it's positive, my new slope is negative. If it's 2 over 3, the new slope is 3 over 2. If I give you 5, I would change the sign so it would become negative. And what's the reciprocal of 5, which is really 5 over 1? It would be one-fifth. If I start with a negative six, reciprocal of negative six, negative reciprocal would be positive, and then six flipped is one-sixth. 
last one, if I give you a slope of negative 10, the negative reciprocal, so change the sign to positive, flip 1 over 10, you just get 10. Now here this question says, are y equals 2x plus 5 and 2x plus 4y equals 8 perpendicular? Now the slope in this original equation here is 2. Okay, this one, if I was to rearrange this equation to see my slope, or I could always use that negative a over b trick, I would end up seeing that my slope is negative one half. Two and negative one half are negative reciprocals of each other. So these two equations would actually be perfectly perpendicular to each other. Remember, perpendicular lines, they create those 90 degree angles. All right, so ready? Write the equation of a line perpendicular to y equals 2x minus 3 through the point negative 2, 3. So here, my original slope in this equation is 2. We just learned that the way you create a perpendicular slope is to change the sign. So if this is positive, my new slope is going to be negative and do the reciprocal of 2, which is 1 half. So now ready? We take the slope and the ordered pair to solve for b to write our equation. So we're going to take this ordered pair. We know this is my x, this is my y. We're going to use this brand new slope and we're going to substitute those values in. So 3 equals negative 1 half times negative 2 plus b. This just simply then becomes a solving equation. We already know this skill from our parallel work and then we have that. So now I'm going to take my original equation y equals 2x minus 3 and my brand new equation that I wrote, y equals negative 1 half x plus 2, and graph them. Now, I've already done the work for graphing them for you. This one here, y equals 2x minus 3, is this graph, that line. This graph here at 2 and then a negative 1 half is this graph here. And they're perpendicular because they make a right angle. That's what perpendicular lines do. All right. Original slope here in 2x plus y equals negative 2. If I did my trick of negative a over b, so negative 2 over 1, it, my slope would be negative 2. If I rearrange the equation, I could also do that. If my original slope is negative 2, my negative reciprocal slope would be positive 1 half. We take the slope and the ordered pair to solve for b. So this becomes negative 2 times 1 half times negative 1 plus b. We're just basically doing our regular rules to solve for b like we did before. And we end up getting negative 3 halves, or we can call it negative 1.5. Either one is completely fine. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. We then go ahead and we put our two equations together, so the original and the brand new one that we created. We could also rewrite that first equation in slope-intercept form if it's easy enough for us to graph. If you want to pause right now and graph it before I show you what it looks like, you can. But if I was to go ahead and graph those two lines, this is what they would look like. They would intersect at this point here at a 90 degree angle. Last example for us, if you want to give this a shot. 2x minus 3y equals negative 6, so my slope is negative a over b, so it's 2 thirds. My perpendicular slope then would be negative 3 over 2. We take the slope and the ordered pair to solve for b. We end up getting actually b equals 0. So this is a really tiny, tiny equation to graph. If I want to graph this first equation in slope uh, standard form, rather, I plug in a 0 for x, I end up getting a 2 for y. If I plug in a 0 for y, I end up getting negative 3 for my x value. And if I graph these two lines, here, y equals negative 3 halves x is this equation here. Okay, that's that graph. And my other one is this equation here. These two lines would intersect at a perfect 90 degree angle. I know this is a lot of information. I hope it was helpful for you. Please rewatch if you need to.